Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to your continuing coverage of the Defense Suit, brought to you and organized by Join Dota, commentated by Tosh Lee and sponsored by Razor and Ben Q. Yes, indeed. You can take a look at the-defense.com for all the details that you need to know about this tournament. You can find all the games there, all the VODs, team information, tournament structure information, so on and so forth. And you can also take a look at joindota.com for all sorts of fantastic Dota 2 related goodness. And have to mention their name one more time, Razor and BenQ, the sponsors of this tournament. In fact, can we see them up here? We, yeah, we can, yeah, we go. BenQ, Razor, the icon's going up right here. But who do we have playing up for you today? I believe we are still in the group stages. We will have Dara on the side of the Radiant, hailing from the land of the Ukraine. And they will be fighting it out against Complexity Gaming over on the Dire side from the Americas and both of them fighting for further progression within this tournament, as you'd expect. Once again, I've skipped many games, flicking through ahead through the pages, found one that looks interesting, a couple of teams that everyone knows and loves, and once again, Razer haven't, or rather Dara, haven't quite gotten their name together just yet. It's obviously meant to spell Razer. This is the past 10 or so games I've casted with these guys, they haven't gotten it right, and they continue to not get it right. It is now Ray, with random question marks placed in between. Maybe it's two different words. It's like Ray question mark, and then you've got E? They're really not sure. Who knows? And full roster on both sides. On Dara's side, we have Go, Captain Blow, Captain Go, or Go in the captain seat, whatever you want to say. Art style, G, M, and Feed. And then we have Captain Fluff over on the side of Complexity, J O, T C, Hannah Montana, and I X Mike. And the first couple of bands to come out of the team Dara are that of Lycan, that of Darkseer. Two very standard bands, especially Lycan with the opposing team having first pick. Darkseer, solo side lane split pushing, annoying monster, tanky, I hate him. He's horrible. That's Dark, sir. Complexity responding to this with a couple of very standard bands as well. We have Lashrac, we have Enchantress. Pushing machines, and jungling machines, jungling ganking, so on and so forth. Both of these heroes are very powerful, very horrible to deal with. Lashrac that can deal out massive amounts of AoE damage with the fact that every single one of his abilities is an AoE. You have the Split Earth to come out of him which channels, or rather chains nicely with a variety of different heroes. Broodmother is going to be the third hero to be removed out of Complexity Gaming. We still have some strong heroes that are still in the mix. We have Prophet, we have, oh speaking of Prophet, he just gets taken out. But we still have heroes such as Chen, we have Invoker, Chantress has been removed, we have Enigma, so we have uh, still quite a few heroes in Com Complexity Gaming having first pick. Who do they want to go for? There's quite a large assortment. And it simply depends, well, what do they want for their composition? We'll have to wait and see. Can't really make many predictions. Chen is going to be the first pick up, and all I have to say is, yes, I love seeing Chen played. Love playing Chen, love watching Chen played. He yeah, brings such versatility to the battlefield. His slow is... Eh, who cares about that? And it's more about the fact that he can coerce creeps onto his side. This is both useful for ganking towards the early stages of the game, and it's great for bolstering pushes, because all of a sudden there are three very tanky level 6 creeps that are going to help you kill towers or absorb hits from the tower. And a global heal is pretty much... You could say it's pretty much a free mechanism, just the cooldowns a lot longer until you have Aghanims. And you don't need to be near people to help them out. The Global Hill is fantastic, and of course, bring the ability to bring people straight back to the base. Dara, first pickup, going to be that of the Enigma. Powerful and very quick jungler with a lot of teamfight potential to roll out of him. And who do they want to synergize with him? There's a lot of options available. We could go for a bit more single target control. We could go for more damage. We could go for more... AoE damage, teamfight synergy, and so on and so forth. Enigma really opens up the path as to what you want to sort of proceed into for Team Dara. And how will it go? Nobody knows. Ticking away into the bonus time, or the reserve time as it's called now already. We'll just have to wait exactly what Captain Go wants to supplement, what he, what he wants to aim for towards the mid and later stages of the game. Shadow Demon is going to be the next pickup. This opens up a lot of opportunities because Shadow Demon synergizes very nicely with a lot of heroes. Not only is the disruption great at the early game because it's a fantastic initiation, it's great at the later stages of the game because you use it on a powerful hero on their side or on your side and it replicates them which amplifies the damage. And of course, that Soul Catcher, the curse as I tend to call it, which is Soul Catcher is just really friggin' difficult to say in the middle of a cast. It's not difficult, but it's long. Soul Catcher. Soul Catcher. I don't want to say that. But nevertheless, proper use of that Soul Catcher results in a lot of amplified damage and easy, easy, easy kills, especially towards the early stages of the game. And Complexity Gaming with these next two picks have to think of what heroes do we want to deny from being synergized with that Shadow Demon and what heroes do we want. Certain heroes that have a stun, such as, say, 
such as Lashrak who's been taken out, or maybe Sand King who is still currently in the game, synergize fantastically with the disruption. Because it's always 2.5 seconds, you can chain it up very easy provided you can count. And counting to 2.5 is very, very easy, even if you're 5 years old. Easy peasy, but then again they might have trouble with the rest of the concept of Dota and everything like that if you're 5. So chances are you're not playing Dota if you're 5, if you are, you're pretty smart. Also, you probably shouldn't be playing this game while growing up because you'll hate everything and turn in, turn into Hitler, probably. I, I think the, the sense of reasoning that Finger. adults have that play this game is the only reason we don't have more Hitlers. Because this game just makes people angry all day. And Tinker's gonna be the third pickup for Complexity Gaming. This is awesome. Tinker, love Tinker. That's all I have to say. It also gives a little bit more global presence. We're gonna have the boots of travel to come in from the Tinker, hopefully fairly early, depending on how the Tinker goes. Dara will have to think about exactly how their lanes go, because whoever lanes against the Tinker is either gonna get... They're probably gonna get blasted by rockets and missiles, depending on where the Tinker goes, but they also need to think about trying to harass that Tinker and make sure that he doesn't get those boots of travel really quickly. With the Chen, we have the global heal, which is a nice amount of global presence, and the ability to send people back to base, which, uh... I'm not, I'm not sure what to call that global, but it, it, it's sort of global in a sense, I guess. We're not only going to be the third pickup for Dara, so this gives us a bit of counter push, and it gives us a nice amount of disables. Every single person thus far has a single target disable. Enigma with the Malefist stun, Shadow Demon with the Disruption, and the Shackle to come out of the Windrunner. We don't really have a hero just yet that synergizes nicely with the Shadow Demon. Shackle, the problem with Shackle is unless there's a tree behind him, or a hero or creep behind him, then, I mean, it's pretty clutch because they have to be there as soon as that 2.5 seconds end, and chances are they won't be. If there's a tree there already, sure, then you can chain it up beautifully. But it's not exactly a reliable stun to chain up with that disruption. Malfa stun, same thing for that, because it ticks on and off, it's not a constant stun. It one second stun every, I think it's three applications of one second, a maximum rank. We can have a look at this, look at this amazing ability. It shows us the skills of the heroes that are being picked. And here we have Malifas and instant strikes every two seconds, so every two seconds of one second stun, three instances at maximum rank. Lone Druid going to be taken out by Dara with Clinks being the hero to be removed by Complexity Gaming. We have a pushing machine being removed out by Dara and a damaging roaming rapist to be removed by Complexity Gaming. And Invokers being taken out. They're looking at solo mids by the looks of it. Because, uh, well, we don't have a hero that... We can put Windrunner and Solo mid, it's typically not standard. We're also looking at heroes. I'm surprised Complexity actually isn't looking at heroes that synergize with that Shadow Demon, such as SK, possibly even Conker. But we're taking out the Clinks, taking out the Invoker. Actually, Invoker does synergize with the Shadow Demon because you, you get the Disruption and Sunstrike, as well as the Amplify damage. It's the easiest, you know, half of their HP gone within a fraction of a second you'll ever get. A lot of fun, very easy peasy. That's a freaking lot of damage. So Invoke a pretty understandable pickup. Clinks. I don't know. I've Dara. I've seen Dara play Clinks a good number of times. I haven't seen them play it that much, but they do love it. It does work out nicely. Crystal Maiden going to be picked up, and this hints towards something like a Morphling, possibly something. Uh, well, who's going to? Oh, maybe Crystal Maiden is just going to babysit the Tinker. Maybe it doesn't hint towards any of that. And we're just going to use the Crystal Maiden to sit beside the Tinker, make sure that he doesn't find himself caught out in any possibly deathly situations. <clears throat> and I feel Dara right now want to go. I actually have no idea what they want to go for. We have. I think they want something that has a bit more a AOE. SK would be great. We get some single target control, and then we've got the Epicenter, which will synergize fantastically with the Black Hole. Which what? And we want something that will synergize well with that Shadow Demon, in terms of uh, the Amplify damage and the Disruption. Chain is stunned with that Disruption. Conquer works nicely. Conquer, you got the Torrent and the Curse. It's a lot of damage. We see Mouse Sports. Mouse Sports and Dara are one of the only teams off the top of my heads that actually run this lineup. But it works together so beautifully. It's sort of magic if you pull it off right. It's pretty, it's awesome, it's amazing. Of course, you get the Soul Catch, I mean, not the Soul Catch, the Disruption, get the Soul Catcher on them, and then you follow it up with the easiest torrent of your life, and then you just whack them with the Tidebringer, and they die. Especially towards the early stages of the game. Tiny going to be the next pickup. This is by no means a bad choice, because we have three heroes thus far that are very, very squishy. Kunga could withstand against the Toss Avalanche combo, but Windrunner, Shadow Demon, and Enigma, absolutely not. However, the problem is, 
Enigma's probably not going to find himself in any positions towards the early stages of the game where it's going to be caught out by Tiny. Meanwhile, Shadow Demon has the disruption. He can disrupt himself to avoid that avalanche toss combo if he is quick about it. And then we have Windrunner who can simply Windrunner away to safety and be absolutely fine. So Tiny's not exactly going to be the best. It's a good pickup, but it's not exactly going to make Dara go, ah, oh, crap, we have to be super careful about where we go. Waiting on Dara's fifth hero. I'm trying to think, what what would they want currently? With what do they want to synergize with what they currently have? They've got a very nice lineup. They don't. I wouldn't say they have all that much late game, unless you unless Conga can get Daedalus and a Shadow Blade and one shot the entire team. But that's relying on luck, and you probably don't want to rely on luck too much, especially in a professional game where there's a lot of money on the line. Queen of Pain is going to be the next pickup. This is a fairly obvious one, actually. Should have sort of guessed this. But it synergizes uh, reasonably well with Shadow Demon, but it brings out a lot of burst damage. And combined with that black hole, it's a lot of damage indeed. Scream, ulti, and great mobility with the blink. This is also good against Tiny, because I had to think of a hero that would be able to escape from Tiny. Queen of Pain, blink, easy peasy. And this most likely puts Queen of Pain mid. We'll have Shadow Demon and Conker going down, possibly... Uh, I'm going to guess bottom, maybe top, we'll have to wait and see. Windrunner, actually, Windrunner will most likely take top. Shadow Demon conquer down bottom and Enigma in the jungle. Over on complexity side, most likely Tiny mid, Crystal Maiden and Tinker up top. Tidehunter possibly solo bottom with Chen in the jungle. I'm not sure, maybe we'll see a, a tri lane with Chen in their jungle. No, I'm not sure if that would work out that nicely. Tidehunter taking the off lane, we'll have to Tinker in there and the Crystal Maiden and Chen tri lane. Not sure. Ah, and true Dota fashion. Pause at the beginning of the game. It wouldn't be a game of Dota without this. Let's have a look at who is playing who over on the team of Dara. Over in the rating, we have Artstyle taking up the role of the Queen of Pain. M playing as a Windrunner. Go playing as a Shadow Demon. G taking up the role of that Conqueror. And he is looking pretty swaggin' today. And last but by no means least, Feed playing as that Enigma. And over on the side of Complexity, TC playing as a Tiny. We have Fluff Prepare playing as a Chen. Battle. IX Mike as a Crystal Maiden. J.O. playing as that Tinker. And of course, Hannah Montana, who is freaking swagging. We've got some swag going on in both teams thus far. And look at the flags. For once, the flags are working. And this is, I just love these flags. They're awesome. We've got the little Complexity icon over on the bottom. Same can be said for Razor. The D, um, Dara, God damn it, not Razor. And of course, a flag with Razor there, spelled correctly, unlike their name. But oh well, they're working on it. They're trying really hard, and that's what matters. It's possible we might see Shadow Demon and Conquer in mid, and Queen of Pain taking one of the solo lanes instead of Queen of Pain in mid. It works out nicely. Depends who you're laning up against. I'm guessing they want that combination against the Tinker, so they can cause as much damage as possible. So if it turns out the Tinker isn't mid, then they might they'll probably change around and try and go to his lane and cause as much death as possible. Tiny and Crystal Maiden at top? That's not exactly something I would have expected. We'll have Tinker mid. Maybe we'll have Tiny solo top and Crystal Maiden will be rotating down bottom. Just spending some time here to make sure Tiny doesn't get caught out and Crystal Maiden do a bit of warding and then just waddle back to mid. Chan, of course, most likely going to be in the jungle. That leaves Tidehunter to take the off lane. The battle begins. I think we're looking to be in the jungle. Double damage to be secured here by Windrunner almost immediately. And we are indeed going to have Shadow Demon and Conquer in mid as opposed to bottom. But this still works out fantastically. This leaving Queen of Pain to take the bottom lane and Windrunner to go solo top. And of course, Enigma in the jungle. Of course, J.O. in the mid. And we are indeed going to have Crystal Maiden and Tiny. Crystal Maiden can rotate. She has a four, she has a freaking four staff. That's awesome. But Crystal Maiden can make her way down to bottom if she finds herself caught out. I mean, if Tinker finds himself in any trouble, which he will. Going up against Shadow Demon and Conker is painful. It is uh, the easiest first blood of their life. They just need to get that rank in the Soul Catcher. Preferably one in the Tidebringer, and they're dead. In it comes already. Disruption to come down. The Torrent to follow, but he moves out of the way. But he has to move back away from the tower. A lot of damage is going to be dealt, but not enough to secure first blood. But nevertheless, it's forcing Tinker back, forcing him to use his regen. Which is no doubt beneficial. Because he won't have it later. But a little bit of early aggression is very nice. And Tinker is going to have a lot of trouble getting those last hits. Speaking of last hits, always got to remember that this thing should be open at all times. And Tidehunter is probably going to have a little bit of 
trouble going up against the Queen of Pain. Might want to get some ranks in those Kraken shells so the right click damage isn't too absurd. We're moving in already. Torrent missing again. The curse has landed down on him already. A few more right clicks will be able to secure the kill. Rockets fly out. This isn't looking so great for Dara, actually. Having been forced to back off, Tonka having to use a healing salve. They haven't been hitting with the Torrent lately. Geo is expecting it oh so obviously, and as a result is backing off where he thinks it would be, and he's been doing a good job of being accurate thus far. And pushing himself forward, wanting to get the last hits on the neutral cam, using the power shot to help clear the wave out, so the neutral cam will, just, will return to where it should be. G and Go looking to want, looking like they want to push forward once again. Geo barely dodging the Tidebringer right there. And Hannah Montana being pushed back so far, forcing to eat a tree. He's really low on HP. In fact, the poison might kill him. The healing salve might just barely be enough. Or rather the... I think he's going to die. I don't think the tango is enough. And he just barely survives on 15 HP, using the healing salve immediately. Invisibility rune to be secured here by the Tinker. Invisibility. Once again, Queen of Pain pushing forward. Gush and Anchor Smash to go down. And now she's the one that's been caught out, but she will be able to blink herself to safety and use a healing salve to bring herself back to full maximum HP and so on and so forth. Still haven't seen the Disruption and uh, Torrent combo to come out just yet, which is downright unfortunate. Chen waiting in position. Does he have any creeps with him? He does not. I'm not sure why he's just chilling out here. It'd be good if he had a creep, a Centaur Khan or something. Hannah Montana still having not the greatest of time. Four last hits thus far. Looking over at the Queen of Pain, currently 13-2, securing herself a Ring of Regen. The right click damage is already coming out. Forcing the Tide Hunter very far back, not electing to get ranks in Kraken and Shell. I guess the damage is stopped. Wouldn't be all that much. I think J.O. took a hit there from the Tidebringer. And we're moving in once again. No mana on the Conquer, so if we use that Disruption combo, there would be no Torrent to follow it up. Well, Winner on having a dandy old time down at bottom. Avalanche should come down. A Toss is going to follow. A nice chunk of damage and the Crystal Nova. She's going to try to win on herself to safety. The Nova comes out. The Ensnare comes out. Hiding in the trees, hoping that TC doesn't decide to follow. Power shot to go through. First Blood has been spilled over the top lane. TC securing it for the team of Complexity. But he is very low. And a couple of hits from the tower might be enough to bring him down. But he will be relatively safe by the looks of it. Winner on taking a fall. And Kunker might be the next to fall. Yes, indeed. Dara bringing it back one for one, taking a kill on the Tide Hunter. Yes, thank you, Queen of Pain. We still haven't used this combo to full effect. Using the march to get last hits is actually very smart by the Tinker, but it is a move of desperation. It shows that he knows that he can't move in or else he'll die, so he's resorting to the march of the machines, resorting to just staying back. He doesn't have a bottle yet. He's going to go for the double damage. Feed once and Malphus is going to deny it. He does not indeed. Wait, he does get it. He does deny it, rather. Nice use of the Malifus. Nice map awareness for, for him. Denying that double damage rune Dyer's effectively instantly. Queen of Pain already pushing away towards his bottom tower. Hannah Montana returning to the fray to try and defend as best as she can, but Hannah Montana cannot get too close because, well, it's a Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain can dish out a lot of damage, both exchanging right clicks, but both sides ultimately going to be fine. And Jo still not pushing himself too far forward, but as a result, not dying, but only 7-1 to one on the creep score. Not exactly great. And he's just secured himself the boots. No bottle, no soul ring. I think he's going to skip the soul ring. Or maybe he'll go for it after this, after the boots. Actually, yeah, that makes more sense because he wants to be able to escape as best as he possibly can. And while Tinker's squishy, the laser beams is pretty good against this combo because you use the laser beams as soon as you come down from the disruption and then Kunker's going to have some trouble dealing some right-click damage to you. So it works out very nicely. And... And opting to get those levels in the March of the Machines means that they're going to have to go into the March of the Machines to not only get last hits, but to fight. Meanwhile, I think M might be getting caught out. Crystal Nova come down, trying to win run herself out of there. She might be able to escape by the looks of it. The Hellcaller starts going immediately on TC. Courier joining the fray as well. Wants to go in, throwing the Crystal Maiden up ahead. The Ensnare comes down and an easy kill for the team of Ken Complexity. <laughs> that was a rather comical one. However, Black Hole to come down already. The Tidehunter immediately taking a fall, but V takes a lot of damage for it. Probably worth using the black hole. It's not like we're going to have any massive teamfight engagements thus far, and the score is being brought back to two for two on both sides. Taking a look over at the gold, closing in on a 2k advantage for the team of Dara, with a 1k XP advantage also for the team of Dara. So doing a nice job thus far, and this is all because the Tink is getting absolutely no farm. The Tide Hunter is getting absolutely no farm as well. 
It looks like we really want to get a freaking kill on this thing. We still haven't been able to successfully land that devastating combo of, uh, for lack of a better term, pure rape. Here we have Enigma waiting position. We might try and go on Geo, but there's no damage to reinforce. Just going to tell him, bitch, this is my rune. Get off my turf. Once again, M is diving deep into the jungle. We have to be careful of Chen and his army of creeps. Having the Alf, oh, that's, an, that's a wildkin, and of course the center. Going to use that tornado and be an absolute nuisance by the looks of it. Man, screw that spell. Hate that spell. And Windrunner really has to be careful. Where the hell is Tinko? He's all the way back here. He's scared to push himself a little bit too far forward. A bottle being secured for him, for him, which is exactly what he needs. If he can control the runes, he should be able to survive against the harassment to come out of these two. But the team of Complexity pushing very far forward on this tower, using the creeps to bolster the creep wave. And of course, this freaking tornado that's just going to be a pure, pure annoyance. And this tower might take a fall if reinforcements don't roll in. Dara can't come close, or M can't come close because of that tornado. It will be able to kill him, especially at this level, so he has to be careful. 15 to 0. Tidehunter is sad. Two deaths under his belt as well. However, TC are going to secure themselves. God damn it, complexity. Are going to secure themselves this tier 1 tower. Easy peasy. A nice chunk of gold for their team. And Tinker's at the point where this where this combination of disruption and torrent is not going to be so effective because March of the Machines means that they have to fight in a march. We're going to go on it anyway. Curse and Soul Catcher to go down. There goes the torrent. Here comes the combo. Hand of God to go out and G-Force to back off, taking a lot of damage. And the use of that laser means that he cannot do the right click damage that he needs to do. He's getting beaten down by the creep wave here. But he has a bottle. He'll bring himself to absolute perfect health. And the team of Vetdera want a little bit of revenge. They took their tier 1. Well, we want to take your tier 1. And Dara Art Style, alongside Fee, down on the bottom, are pushing their way towards this tier 1 tower. Hannah Montana being the sole defender. And uh, against these two, as well as the conversions, he will be able to, able to reduce the damage with an anchor smash, but he won't be able to stop it. He does have a Ravage, however. Meanwhile, G is looking like he could potentially be getting caught out. TC and, of course, a Centaur chasing after him, but they decide to back off, realizing that he's just that little bit too fast with the phase boots. And the tier 1 tower over the bottom takes a fall. Dara securing their first tower. And they're going to keep going. Malthus Thunder coming on the Tidehunter. Is the damage going to follow up? It will not indeed. Oh yes it will. Shadow Strike as well as the Scream. And Gush to return. TPs are coming in immediately blinking out to safety. TC is running in. Wanting to get an avalanche here. And it comes on the Queen of Pain. But she can just blink out in the next couple of seconds. Feed staying nearby to make sure to reinforce. In case Queen of Pain does indeed start taking massive amounts of damage. Fluff continuing to spend his time in the jungle, as Chen does, it's exactly what you do. Playing relatively standard, looking like he's going to be working his way towards, yes indeed, a mechanism. Crystal Maiden just chilling up top. And pushing our way towards this middle tower, the combination of G and Go, the Shadow Demon Conquer combo. And this tower is looking like it will indeed go down. Queen of Pain's working her way towards the Lincolns by the look of it. Enigma going for, I think, a headdress to go into mechanism. I'm going to guess that's the case. The tier 1 tower takes a fall, however, G is going to pay for it, immediately getting popped down. Go trying to do what he can do, but now being forced to run off, and he might get caught out. No, he will not. He will successfully escape, but Conker does take a fall to the team of Complexity. Evening the score to 3-3 three to three for both sides, and we're moving in on Art Style and Feed. Avalanche to go down. Fantastic Avalanche and a nice Ravid. Mouth is stunned to come down too. Toss in the air. Enigma instantly takes a fall. Queen of Pain trying to blink herself out to safety, and it looks like she will successfully escape. In the meanwhile, Complexity continuing to push down this middle lane mech charge to go out, march of the machines to bolster the creep enforcements, kill the opposing creep wave rather, but reinforcements are rolling in. We want to defend this tier 1, but I don't think we are going to be able to. Power shot to go through, rockets to fly out, a big chunk of damage, Center Khan being an absolute nuisance. This courier could get caught out, the tower takes a fall, boat to fly out, hand of god to go as well. Chen getting hit by the boat, curse to land down on him, he will take a fall, power shot to fly through, and now the Crystal Maiden currently running for her life. Trying to get the Tidebringer there on the creeps. Not quite successful. And she will escape along with Chen's click creeps. Tinker Illusions moving in. Trying to deal a little bit of damage. Tinker not too far away as well. Rockets and March to come out. Would do a nice chunk of damage. G getting awfully low to this. Wants to be a little bit careful, but he is going to back off. And TC's getting a little bit of free farm at bottom. Pushing his way down this bottom lane. Has himself some phase boots and some drums of war. Kunker looking like he's working his way straight towards a Shadow Blade. Shadow Demon just having the urn of shadows in hands. Enigma having the headdress and the buckler. Getting very close to his mechanism. Just about 75 more gold and he will be there. 
Tidehunter not having all that much, but that's standard fare for the Tidehunter. Mechanism in hand for the Chen as we saw earlier. Mechanism plus Hand of God is just freaking fantastic. So much heal to come out of that. Tinker, 23 to 2. Not exactly very happy in the creep scores. Just having uh, about 1k off boots. Still has an awful lot to go. And Dara just continuing to push out these lanes. Tinker, a little bit too weary to play it, to push himself out. He wants to play it safe. The G's about to get caught out. Rockets and laser beam to fly out. One charges to go. It's not going to be enough. And Kunker immediately takes a fall. 6-4 to four on the score. Or the team of complexity, that doesn't rhyme at all. Looking at the gold, we have a 4k advantage for Dara being brought back just ever so slightly. With a one, with a closing in on 1k advantage in the XP department for the team of complexity. Bringing it back by the looks of it. Chen's stacking up this ancient camp, most likely for Tinker. Surprised he's been using one of the crates and TC's getting called way the hell out. Trying to toss himself up to safety. But he is going to take a fall. One more right click will do it indeed. And Tiny takes a fall. Another kill secured by Dara. Now, rather to not toss himself to safety, but use toss. Hopefully reduce the damage that he's taking by an ever so slight amount. Blink to scream and Shadow Strike to come out. And the ulti being used as well. Hand of God to pop down. And this means that IX Mike will survive. But Dara really wants it. Arsal moving in. Blink to scream to come out. However, she's in a bad situation. She doesn't have any TP. Has to be careful. This is a stacked... Ravage just barely dodging the Ravage. Very nicely done here by the Queen of Pain. Is she getting a Bloodstone? I don't think I've ever seen Queen of Pain get Bloodstone. I figured she'd be going for Lincolns. Wait, Lincolns? This doesn't build into a Lincolns, does it? No, it doesn't. Builds into Bloodstone. I don't know. Disruption to go down on freaking someone. Nice torrent to land there on the Tide Hunter. Hannah Montana immediately getting popped. Mech Charge to go down. Black Hole catching up the Chen and all of his creeps. Boat to go down as well. Fluff taking so much damage. Crystal Maiden teleporting in at the wrong time. Tinker getting shackled up. A member, two members of Dara fall very rapidly. Tornado coming in doing a nice chunk of damage from the Chen Creeps. Disruption land down on Fluff. He's still alive, but he finally falls. The Shadow Demon will pay for it. However, one right click will take him down. Queen of Pain trying to run away to safety, and it seems she will make it. M also very low and currently on the run. Tiny trying to chase after. Does he have the speed? He does have the drums of war, but Windrunner has a wind run and as a result will be able to run away. A fairly even exchange of affairs thus far. Not sure who came out ahead. We burned a lot of cooldowns on both sides. And all of Chen's creeps got killed. But considering complexity got three and took two, I'd say they came out ever so slightly ahead in that engagement. XP and gold still seem to be... XP is just bouncing back and forth. It's very volatile right now. The difference is pretty much negligible. Toss an avalanche going down the Queen of Pain. She'll be fine, however. Boots of Travel being finally secured here by the Tinker. A little bit late. Typically, you'd see it by 9 or 10 minutes. But he was getting harassed a lot. He didn't take any deaths, which is the most important part against that combination. No early game's death. So the team of complexity, J.O. is handling this fantastically. For a second there, I thought that was the Radiant Courier. I was like, what the hell is it doing there? Does it want to die? And I'm on Tana moving in. We want to catch out feed, but we're not going to do so. He's just a little bit too fast. Taking the Troll Shaman, trying the using the Convergence to try and kill it off, but it was not successful. And Konga continuing to push out this bottom lane. He's already pushed his way towards a tier 3 tower, and no one's in sight. G is free to keep pushing. However, Complexity are thinking of going for a trade. They want to push out this top lane, secure the tier 2 tower. And with the entire force of them here, if no reinforcements roll in, it will be an easy-peasy tier 2 tower for them. But we have Art Style and Feed wanting to defend Midnight Pulse to go down, weaken the Creep Wave as it walks towards the tower. Scream to go out. And it looks like a successful defense. Complexity deciding to back off, just wait for the next Creep Wave, and here it comes. Looks like here's the next push going to come in. G continuing to push his way down this bottom lane, and here's the next engagement going to come in. Rockets to fly out, Arsal taking a bit of damage, as well as the Feed, or rather the Enigma. Crystal Nova to come out, Power Shot to fly as well. The March of the Machines killing everything that's nearby, meaning that Dara cannot engage within it. Tinker being thrown in, I don't think that was intentional, running away very rapidly before more death rolls in, but he got a March of the Machines off, which means they cannot push forward, else they take damage. 
Kunkka coming in to reinforce. Tier 2 tower successfully defended by the looks of it. No complexity, just waiting for the next creep wave. They really want to take it. They're continuing to push forward. Tinker to return to the fray. Tossing the Tidehunter ahead and a fantastic Ravage. Mech Charge goes down. However, the Crystal Nova to come down and a Scream as well. So much damage. Hand of God to pop as well as well the Mech Charge to come out of complexity. A lot of damage to be dealt. Nice Torrent. The boat to come through, hitting two members of complexity. Crystal Nova ulti to fly out. Dara taking lots of damage in this engagement, but several members of complexity has fallen. Gosh taking the kill there. And M currently on the run, Avalanche is barely missing, the Shadow Demon not looking particularly happy with the slow, sending the Shadow Poison and the Purge out on the Tidehunter. A nice engagement for Complexity, trading 2 for 3 once again, Power Drop to fly through, pick up at a couple of creeps, and both sides going to back off. And the Tier 2 Tower successfully standing. Shackle to fly out, is it catching anyone? No, oh, just one of the Centaurs. The double damage, Tiny is moving in, Queen of Pain could find herself caught out, but Tiny can take a lot of burst damage from him, from her rather, and is deciding to retreat off, working his way straight towards Anagonims. I think also having the Soul Ring in hand, Tidehunter, 1300 in the bank, Arcane Boots, looks like maybe he's going for Blink, but with that toss, do they even need the Blink, man, Tiny's just throwing the Tidehunter, throwing the members of Complexity into fantastic positions. Never seen Tiny use that way in a professional game, but it works out so nicely. Bloodstone for the Queen of Pain, which just seems weird to me. Feed moving in, getting a Midnight Pulse to clear out the tree, see exactly where everyone is. The team of Dara want to secure this Tier 1 tower, and it is getting very awfully low, but the double march means that they cannot get engaged at this moment. And Dara looking for the superior positioning to see if they can take on this group. The entire team of Complexity is here and defending. Box to fly out once again. Big chunk of Go's health being removed. Rockets, these rockets just keep on flying. Level 4 rockets and level 4 march. It's a lot of damage that can just continue to be barraged out. Because all Tinker has to do is TP back to the base, rearm, and then jump straight back into the fight. But a lot of momentum is being placed down there on this middle lane. The Dara rapidly rolling in to clean up the mess. The complexity taking this opportunity. Smoke gang to come out. Avalanche to fly, but just barely getting away. M using the wind run to maximum ability once again. This tier two tower will take a fall with the team of Dara being scattered all over the place, and a lot of their TPs either they don't have one or they are on cooldown. Enigma working his way towards a BKB. This tier one tower will take a fall. M the sole survivor, and wind run will not be able to withstand against this composition. Hand of God to go down. A lot of right click damage to go down on this tower. Hand of God fortification has been popped. Reinforcements are steadily rolling in, but this tower will take a fall. We are instead going to let them have it, not going to go for a trade, and see if we can hold them down on the tier 2. Top tower tier 3, rather. Fallen. The complexity are just going to back off. TP, walk away, do whatever the hell you want. Stop this tier 2 tower from taking too much damage. They've gotten a nice little victory. There's no point in getting greedy, because it can just result in failure and death and so on and so forth. Shadow Blade in hand for the Conquer. This is going to allow for some a lot of damage if he gets a if he gets a nice Tide Hunter. If tide bring a hit on them, especially once he gets crits, the damage will start rolling in. Medallion of Courage should be secured next by the Chen. Very standard. Kind of getting ever so closer to that Agonims. Very fast Agonims. Not what you see every day, but Agonims is fantastic. It's pretty much a, a battle fury, but better. The cleave damage is considerably more. Enigma looking like he's going to be working his way towards a BKB next. I think I mentioned that just a few moments ago. Already took a gander at Gunker. Kunker, rather. Kunker, yes, Kunker. Winrunner looked to be possibly going for a pipe. Having the hood might just want it for a bit of spell resistance or possibly build it into a hood of defiance. Four stuffing in Malthus Sun to come down. No shackle to come down, but the curse is land. Midnight Pulse going down as well. Power Shot to follow three, and TC pops like a friggin' fat balloon. Despite being a big tanky rock, but the Crystal Maiden has taken a kill on the Queen of Pain. With the assistance of the Chen and his creeps. Can't blink when you're chain stunned like that. And Hannah Montana thinking, I'm gonna kill this creep wave, but then re realizing, hey, we there's a friggin' Wildkin here. Hey, Chen! Chen! Come pick it up, man! This this hero is... This friggin' creep is annoying as hell. You pick it up, use it on Dara, they'll hate you for it. Dyer's middle tower. Rockets to fly out. Big chunk of Go's health going to be taken out once again. March of the Machine is going to completely obliterate the oncoming Creep Wave. Gush to come out. Four staff to safety, however. Rockets flying in on Go. Immediately pop Chen Alt, or rather Chen Nuke to come out as well. Trying to appeal himself to safety. Is it going to be enough? We have M moving in, wanting to try and safety, but the rockets to come out, as well as the ensnare, and he is going to pay for it. Trying to win run out. Is it going to be enough? We have no gush. It has just been used, and looks like M will be able to escape to safety. Nice force stuff to come out of him. 
and Shadow Demon successfully escaping his walls are very nicely done by Dara. Queen of Pain pushing her way down the bottom and it looks like Complexity want to try and take her. We have three Disables to come out of here. We have the two Centaur stomps, stomps and then we have the Troll Trap to come out of the Shaman. The top tower to be denied by the Tiny. No gold for you, he yells out from across the battlefield. I think we're going to go for Rashan by the looks of it. We do have a nice army of creeps. This is one nicely stacked, ain't oh, it's not, it's reasonably stacked. And Master Machines is going to farm that up easy peasy. Artsile having to be a little bit cautious. Doesn't want to get caught out working her way. Everyone's getting a freaking BKB. Enigma getting a BKB. Queen of Pain getting a BKB. And we do... Well, we don't really have that many disables to come out of complexity. We have the snare. We have... I guess we've got a reasonable amount, but it's not exactly something that you'd crap your pants over. Maybe they're worried about Tinker working his way towards uh, a sheep stick or something. He's going to be getting a four staff next. This ancient camp will be easily farmed up by them. Not going for Rashan. I think they're trying to th trick Dara into thinking that they're taking Rashan, And then when they go into the pit, they freaking kill him. But it seems Dara are not taking the bait. Queen of Pain clearing out the creep waves over here. March of the Machines coming, being pushed forward. However, rockets fly out too. <clears throat> and Shadow Demon being caught out. Forced off trying to bring himself to safety. Being used there by the Windrunner. M saving the day Dyer's once again. Top tower is under attack. A top tower for the team of complexity. Being taken a little bit of siege from the creeps. Tinker's going to reinforce that. Artsile making her way up to the top. Trying to help out. And looks like the next big engagement is going to happen around this Rashan pit. Complexity want it. They want it so bad. Creep's going to bolster in. And it doesn't look like Dera are contesting this just yet. Tiny keeping an eye out on everyone nearby. Hand of God to pop down. But a bit too late. The Tinker takes a fall over the top lane. G moving in. Wants to get a fantastic Tidebringer. But I think they know that he's here. He has to be very careful. Dera's moving in. Rashan is there. Nice shackle to come down. Power shot to follow through. And a fantastic boat and tide. Disrupts and go. Two members of Complexity instantly popping. Fantastic Torrent to come down in there. IX Mike is the next that's going to take a fall without a doubt. And this is an easy Rashan for Dara. A free Rashan essentially and three kills. Jesus Christ. Fantastic combination of Boat and the Torrent. Hitting every single member. All three members of Complexity. Very nicely done. Unfortunately my brain decided to just break at the moment where that was happening. So the commentary was poor but alas... Uh, We'll have to deal with it, won't we? A complexity definitely not letting, wanting them to get this Rashan, but it is going to fall. Aegis of the Immortal going to be secured by the Queen of Pain, and I think complexity are going to try and bring the fight to them, or maybe not. Maybe we're going to back off. They are a little bit weak after Rashan, but everyone for Dara is here, while complexity are missing a few members. Chen also doesn't have any creeps on his side, I don't think. They were pretty much all killed, like the rest of complexity, in that torrent and boat combo. That was a nice fight. That was a nice fight. I didn't even see a black hole or anything. It was just nicely done. Did we see a black No, we didn't. It's not on cooldown. BKB in hand for the Enigma. Windrunner indeed built herself a hood of defiance. No doubt going to be working towards a pipe next. Dyer's top tower is under we might have some members of Dara caught out. We have three of them in the jungle and complexity are moving in. Looks like they have no idea that we're here, that they're here. But if they were to encounter such people, well, it would be some rather easy gold. Aghanim Scepter in hand. Adam Montana getting caught out, or moving in. A nice rabbit to come down, Troll Shat, but a black hole to land down on two members of Complexity. Shackle to go down to follow that, and the right click damage. The damage coming in from everyone. Midnight Pulse to come in, Hand of God to fall, and the Crystal Maiden ulti to fly down. Disruption to go on her as well. Trying to stop it, the boat to land down, picking up the Tide Hunter, an easy kill for her, and the scream and the burst damage immediately pops the Crystal Maiden. And now we're moving on to Complexity. I mean, TC is trying to move out. Geo going to TP out. Complexity running for his life will be able to escape safely. Trading one for three for Dara. No doubt happy about that. Looking at the gold, closing in on a 10k advantage for the team of Dara with a 12k adv XP advantage for the team of Dara, rocketing ahead and looking so strong in this game. BKB in hand for the Queen of Pain. We have indeed built that pipe recipe for the Windrunner. It's going to absorb a lot of the spell damage coming out of complexity. It's going to allow them to fight within marches. It's going to be a big difference in the next upcoming team fight. Tiny just pushing his way forward, clearing out these creep waves as best he can, using that Agonim Scepter. 
top tower is getting pushed forward. M moving in, want to try and catch out this Tinker, but he is a little bit too fast. But the wind run means he can catch up. One more right click to come down, but he's not going to commit to it. And Tinker's just going to TP his way back to safety. However, the tier one tower takes a four, tier two tower over at the top takes a fall. And both sides backing off for the moment. Just going to recuperate for a little bit, lick their wounds. Chen currently having 900 in the bank. Doesn't have arcane boots or anything yet, or a ring of bacillus. Pain without consequence. Regeneration rune to be secured here by the Queen of Pain. And it looks like she's going to be working her way towards an Agonim Scepter next. Tinker, most likely a sheep stick. We'll have to wait and see. Has a four staff for that extra safety and escapability. Crystal Maiden almost getting caught out here by the Queen of Pain, but placing that ward down, seeing that she's nearby and immediately running away, and I think Complexity want to see if they can take the kill on her. She's just chilling out here, man. They still see that she's there, but now they've lost vision, but they probably, now they have vision once again. They know that the creeps are here. She's attacking the creeps, and she knows that she's there. Wow, that didn't come out well at all. She's blinking forward. If they're going to strike, now would be the opportune moment, but they're just... I think she spot them in the... Yeah, she's just going to walk away. This could have been a really easy kill for the team of Complexity, but they ultimately end up not getting it. Which seems a little bit weird. I'm pretty sure they saw her there. But oh well. Tidehorns are also... Tidehorns are working his way towards the pipe next. Has a Veil of Discord in hand already. Wait, it's not a Veil of Discord. I've been calling it the wrong thing, haven't I? Yeah, it's a Hood of Defiance, not the Veil of Discord. God damn it. Like the whole time, it's a... It's a Hood of Defiance, not a, not a Veil of Discord. You're wrong. March to come out. Rockets to fly it as well. Four staff and TP to safety, as you do. TC continuing to farm this ancient camp. For the most part, both sides being relatively passive. A BKB for Conquer. We're just going full on BKB. How many members do we have with BKBs? Conk Feed has a... The Enigma has a BKB. We have G with a BKB. We have Artstar with a BKB, but the Toss and Avalanche to come in. G getting awfully low in health. It Shadow Blade is currently on cooldown, cannot run away for the moment, and one more right click will do it. And Nigma blinking in to try and reinforce Malthus Sun to come down on TC, but he's just going to waltz his way to safety. Meanwhile, Shackle to go down, a fantastic Shackle to come out of them, Power Shot to finish, and the ulti Hand of God to go down as well, preventing their death. Oh, we're going to see a mech charge has already been used. Fluff is about to take a fall. BKB been popped off for Artsile, trying to do the damage that he can do, trying to force off his safety, but Blink to screen to come out of him. Death Pipe to pop off, and Artsile might take a fall. A Ravage, nice Ravage being picked up. The Aegis of the Immortal has been used. Windrunner immediately being popped. Jen, true side being secured by them. Artsile going to see if she can make her way to safety. I don't think so. Trying to blink away. The distance is not that far. And Chen creeps suddenly out of nowhere. Troll trap to come down. We're going to see the Centaur Stomp to follow. And even the Ursa Clap to come out. And four members of Dara just melting under the heat and the Aegis of the Immortal being used up as well and now Feed has to be very careful doesn't want to be caught out has the BKB and the uh, the Blink Dagger but that wouldn't really help him out a Blink a blink to a fantastic black hole won't help you out when there's no damage to follow it up because your whole team's dead <clears throat> Pipe in hand for the Tide Hunter. Geo indeed working his way towards a Agonims oh not an Agonims a Sheep Stick very sand Hannah Montana moving in Gush to go down it hit one of the creeps actually not landing there on the Enigma Malphus done to come down on him. He is going to force to waddle himself away. We have the Crystal Man not too far away. Conversion is taking a nice chunk out of his health, but the Kraken Shell is negating the vast majority of it. The size will be fine. G continuing to farm his way up to great, great justice. Pushing out this lane. Probably going to go for crits next. You know, one day, one moment, Dara is looking so strong. They get themselves, you know, an entire team kill on Complexity, and then suddenly Complexity brings it back almost immediately. Four kills, plus using up of the Aegis. Looking at the gold, we can see after that fight a big dip, but it's still mostly in favor in both departments for the team of Dara. Avalanche to fly out. We're trying to get G, but he's moved out just a little bit too fast. Dust of Appearance to come out as well, but he was a little bit too far away. Dara continuing to push out this middle lane. Looking at the XP, 10k and 10k for both the gold and the experience. On Dara having a fantastic advantage, but Complexity have been bringing out some fantastic fights. They've been doing a very good job. Rocks to fly out. We have it. Malphus Sun to come down there on Hannah Montana. He will be fine, however, under the safety of the tower and the rest of the team to reinforce him. Rocks to fly out once again, being a little bit of a nuisance. However, the damage isn't all that great. Not anymore, at least. 100 in the bank for the Conquer. I think we're still just having tier 1 boots. 
trying to kill off these Chen Creeds. They might successfully take a fall. They will not indeed. Rockets to fly out. This tier 2 tower will take a fall. Pipe to come out. Throwing in, but no Ravage. Ravage is currently off cooldown. The team of Dera immediately panic. BKB to go off. Black Hole to go off on Hannah Montana. This will mean no Ravage to him if he does get taken down. Torrent to fly out. Hand of God to fly out as well. Mech charge. And there goes a Ravage. But D is currently BKB. Screen to fly out. So much damage. The boat missing. Hitting up two members of Complexity. Fluff is going to take a fall. Blinking in to take the kill. Chen takes a fall to the power shot. So many members of Complexity melting at this very moment. Scream going in once again. Feed managing to successfully escape. A nice pickup with the torrent there. G moving in. Shackle doesn't latch. Hannah Montana immediately getting popped. Geo trying to TP out, but the damage is too much, and he does successfully get taken down. Buyback being had for the Tinker. He wants to try and hold off this Tier 2 tower and the Tier 3. Tier 2 tower's actually already taken a fall. Tinker going to do what he can. They're both very low in HP. Tinker sh might be able to take down this Queen of Pain. Double March to come out. But I'm not sure if there's all that much that he can do. He's moving in once again. Is he going to pick anyone up? The Rockets are flying out. The team of Dera are going to back off. They're forced to buy back. They've won a significant team fight and they've taken the tier 2 tower. No reason to get greedy. Let's just retreat and be happy with what we've accomplished. <clears throat> Excuse me. 3k in the bank for the Conquer. Most likely just going to get a Chrysalis, get a Demon Edge and be very, very happy. Maybe even one shot the entire team. Who knows? Asal continuing to work his way towards Aghanims, not any closer than he was before. However. I think we're having the boots of travel, and we're currently moving in on Geo once again, going to force off his way to safety, but the mouth is stunned, making things a little bit difficult, but he does have too much mobility for the Enigma to catch up to him. Tiny's working his way towards an Assault Curious next. Curi How do you say that word? Curious? Curious? I have no freaking idea. Chen's still not having any extra items than he had before, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. I feel Tide really wants a blink, but is it even necessary? Here's the thing, we have that toss. We've seen it used before. If he had Ravage before, it would have been pretty devastating on the team because they reacted late. Two members of them BKB'd immediately, but no Ravage came out. But if the Ravage, if we had a Ravage, it would have came out before the BKB landed. It could have been a pivotal moment and maybe even won the team fight for complexity. Or at least made it not such a devastating one-sided rape fest, for lack of a better term. Closing in on 13k in the gold department with the XP tipping to 20k. We're way past 15. There's a lot of XP. Looking at the levels for Dera, they're pretty high. While uh, complexity, well, not so high. And does have a nice army of creeps. We do have a Stout Shield to be picked up there by the Tide Under. A little bit later than usual, but alas. And Dera going in position. Smoke gang come out. They're going to come in from the behind and blinking in. Mouth is stunned to go down and fluff and a nice ravage. Is the black hole going to land? It is not yet. BKB going to come out with all the torrent and the boat popping everyone. Hand of God to go down as well. Fluff immediately pops. Hannah Montana is taking a lot of damage. But the he might take a fall. Crystal made an ulti to go out. Ravage to go down as well, but G is currently BKB, not being affected by it. Power shot to go through. X marks the shot immediately into Torrent, but dies before it can even land. Four members of complexity almost immediately melting. Chen trying to move his creeps to safety. He will successfully do so. Tiny being the sole survivor, not even using a black hole. It's so nicely done by the team of Dera. And this is going to be an easy tier 3, an easy barracks. They might even be able to rotate and pick up another. Tiny thinking of maybe engaging, thinking not going to put down an avalanche. He has to be careful. He could melt down so easily to this force. And moving in, Malphite's Sun to come down. Blink to scream to Shadow Strike to Torrent to a lot of freaking damage. We have the Curse to land down. A few more right clicks. Hand of God goes down. The damage is not enough. And we have the Crystalis in hand for the Conquer. A nice 700 crit. We don't even have the Daedalus yet, and the damage coming out of him is insane. And after another great little victory, after taking a barracks, we're gonna go kill Rashan. Seems like the way to go. Who's gonna pick it up this time, however? Queen of Pain might want to secure it for herself once again. Queen of Pain. Wait a second. I really hope she's not going for a Scardi. That just seems weird. 
I don't want to say hope, I guess I can do it. They're really far ahead. It seems like an odd choice. I was thinking, wait a minute, point booster, ultimate orb, sheep stick, agonims? I don't think so. Meanwhile, an engagement is happening. Hannah Montana being caught out here by art style. BKB being used up. Hannah Montana moving in. No Ravage is up, however. And just trying to do what he can do. Rashan has not fallen just yet, but being brought very low. Nice Ravage to come down, but a fantastic black hole to come in. Nice Shackle, rather, not Ravage. Pipe to go down, as well as the mech charge. Malphus stunned to land on J.O., trying to force off his way to safety. It's not going to be enough. Instead, to land there on Art Style, trying to deal as much damage to him as possible. He's just going to blink away. Going to scream. Crystal Maiden will pop. And now Hannah Montana, very tanky with the buckler and the and the Kraken shell, but not tanky enough. Blinking in ahead to block his retreat. Torrent to go down isn't even necessary. The shackle lands as well. And once again, the entire team of Complexity melts almost instantly. And they're not even going to finish this off with Rashawn. They're just going to go straight for the barracks. GG is already being called out by Complexity. Scream to fly out because why not, even though there are no creeps here already. And despite the time ranking complexity, do not give a toss, they are just going to leave. And give Dara the kill straight away. The victory, rather. Easy, yeah. Peasy indeed. Tower will fall, the Ancient will fall next. We might even have the game just end because the team of complexity isn't here just yet. It is possible. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Seems like that will be the case. The engine will take a full BKB going out because why the hell not? Boat to fly out too. Gotta to try and take them on in the fountain. I don't think we're gonna be able to do so, however. G taking a big chunk of damage. BKB to go off. We're moving in once again, but the game has ended. Ancient has taken a fall. And that is really loud. I think that's louder than usual. I may have turned the volume up. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the defense to the group stages. Dara going up against complexity, with Dara completely smashing them into the ground. Actually, it wasn't really, a, it wasn't a stomp. It was fairly balanced. Complexity brought out some fantastic fights, but Dara just managed to grasp onto the lead throughout the entirety of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bintoshli. I'll see you next time.